the end of that thing. And um, and the the guy who was the stunt guy who was working on the car, Bruce Bruce said, "Now wait a minute, is the car going to veer left or right at all?" And he said, "Nope, it's going to be completely straight." And he said, "Well, are you sure? Because I'm setting the camera here, and I don't want to miss the shot. I don't want to lose the shot." And he said, "No, it's going to be completely straight." Not no, it veered. And then after a few little bit of discussion, the guy finally said, "Well, if it's going to veer, it's going to veer left." And Bruce was like, okay, well, I'm going to just adjust it a little bit just in case and blah, blah, blah. And, of course, I don't remember if he said left or right, but, of course, when they shot it, and you can see it on the tape, the car veers off, and it was in the opposite direction. Of the oh, guy had said it nice. <laughs> And it slams into the side thing and then goes off the, off the uh, bridge. That was also <laughs> during a time when we had a lot of budget. You yeah, know, and, you can and take the time as the years went it. on, the budget got cut more and more and more and more, and we just couldn't do scenes like that anymore. There was no way that we could. I think the last big thing that we did was uh, we shot in San Juan, Puerto Rico. Is that for the same? I think that was the last Island? big remote that we did, huh? Was that for San Cristobal when you guys shot in San Juan? Yes, that was in San. Okay. That was in. Uh, yeah, San Juan. Yeah, it was all shot in Puerto Rico. We shot. Some, okay. We went twice. Kim and I went down, just the two of us with a camera crew, and 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 uh, we shot the scenes where they're sort of walking along the streets of old San Juan, and then we went back a few weeks later with I think ten or twelve actors, you know, and shot that whole thing of, you know, I, I remember something about. For some reason, I was breaking into San Cristobal with Kurt McKenney climbing a wall and darkness and all that stuff. That's I remember that, but yeah. <laughs> well, I want to thank you for, you know, past 28 years. I mean, I grew up on you. I remember Josh diving in the water. I was like seven, eight years old at that time, wow. and I'm just sitting there crying like, Grandma, <laughs> Josh, just leave him. He was dying. You know? <laughs> and it was just... I, I just miss I miss Guiding Light. We don't have shows like this on TV anymore. I mean, I'm a no. soap freak, but Guiding Light was always, you know, my number one. Roger and Josh and Billy, Alan, everybody, you guys are so missed. You're so well, thank missed. Thank you so much. I, I really uh, appreciate you saying that. Thank you so much. Oh, yeah, no problem. Now my mom's going to freak because I got to talk to Josh Lewis. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you for taking my call, Pam. Don, thanks welcome. a lot. This is awesome. Awesome. Thank awesome. you. Thank you, Tracy. Thank you for calling in. Anytime. Bye. Right. Bye-bye. One quick question before we let you go, because I know we're at the top of the hour, but I wanted to ask you about your film. Is it Dracano? Dracano, you... yes. Dracano. Dracano. Yes. You have to combine the words dragon and volcano to say Okay, it I wasn't quite sure. <laughs> uh, yes, I'm saving you all from the dragon apocalypse. So you're oh. welcome. Okay, yep. thank you. Yes. No problem. No problem. <laughs> and that just it, so it happens was, to come know, out on was, the 21st, right? <laughs> what did you say? I said and that's just so happened going to be coming out on the 21st when we're supposed to <laughs> right. have this apocalypse. The Mayan calendar thing, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The dragons will be... It was fun. It was a lot of fun to shoot. It was just one of those odd things that you do as an actor. And, you know, it was a great group. It was the first time I'd ever shot any sci-fi like that, um, where we had a lot of, we had green screen and, or they had built like a big dragon's lair inside of a studio. And, you know, it was great fun to shoot. A lot of great fun people. And uh, I think it's going to be one of those that'll uh, probably, you know, be on Netflix pretty fast and <laughs> and, uh, and uh, well, Sci Fi def- Channel and all that. Every but, uh, uh, dedicated soap fan will be buying it. You know that. <laughs> once again, playing a kind of a hard ass uh, military guy. I don't know. That oh, seems okay. to be what I get cast in these days. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't serve a day personally, but um, having grown up in the Vietnam era, I didn't. Uh, I, I never served, but. Uh, um, that seems to be what they think I should be now. So I go in a lot of roles like that now. As long as you keep working, that's all that matters. Mm-hmm. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Pretty much. <laughs> and I've had a. I've been doing fine since uh, since know. Scouting Light ended. I've been uh, just doing a lot you know of theater. a lot of varied fun things, and and uh, each experience has been completely different. And and I'm thankful for every single one of them. You know. Oh. 
Well, we want to thank you from our heart for joining us tonight. I mean, you've made so many people happy. I can't even begin to Uh, tell you. Well, that was easy. (laughs) (laughs) Well, Well, thank you for having me on. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, It's been a real pleasure. I yeah, just want to thank you personally uh, for being here with us and just, um, gosh, letting us hear your voice again. It's been so great. Yeah. And I know the Guiding Light, I think I can speak for all the Guiding Light fans that this has been a tremendous treat for them, So, um, as well as myself. And, and we just want to thank you. And, and happy holidays to you and your family. Very thank Christmas, you, you happy too. New Year. Thanks for having me. It was a great walk down memory lane for me, too. I need yeah. that every once in a while, so thank you. Well, thank you for sharing You're that welcome. with us. All right. You have a good weekend. Thank you, you too. Thanks. Thank bye bye. Bye bye. Well, Don, I have to say, congratulations. You did not once call him Josh. You know, I am amazed. <laughs> Some days I amaze myself. <laughs> Considering and for the listeners out there, Pam and I had this conversation yesterday or in the last couple of days and I, I said to her, I said, Now, when Robert um calls tomorrow, uh you know, we usually have Skype on open during the show so we can talk if we need to. And and, uh, and I said, please scream at me on Skype if I dare say I call him Josh Lewis once. And she didn't have to. I'm so proud of myself. I'm patting myself on the back right now, Pam. If you there you go. <laughs> I'm so proud now, of myself. Now you can have a shot of tequila. <laughs> I know. Where's Grant Alexander when you need him? Hey, and by the way, we forgot to tell Josh we had his vodka ready. So, you know. Um, oh, no. <laughs> but uh, what a wonderful, wonderful hour it has been. And he is right. It was a great trip down memory lane for not only myself, um, but for all the Guiding Light listeners out there. And, Pam, I know you didn't watch Guiding Light, but I must tell you missed out. I, I think it's kind of like people that watch General Hospital, you know, that are diehard DH fans and diehard uh, Guiding Light fans. You know, back when Guiding Light was on the air, it was always opposite of when the, General and Hospital was. Right, yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and so, needless to say, it um you know, people who watch GH would say, oh, you got to come walk over to the GH side and you won't be back. And we would say the same about Guiding Light. And, you know, I just could never tear myself away from the Spaldings and the Bowers and the Lewis family um, long enough to even figure out what was going on over at General Hospital. I mean, we had our own hospital. And right. um, uh, and if memory started, I think it was Memorial. I could be wrong. I might have my wrong hospital on the wrong side. But anyway, Ed Bauer was the doctor. And um, there was no reason to run why I needed to go to General Hospital to see what was going on. (laughs) 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 I love, you know, and I've actually watched it. I mean, you know, when uh, Got In Life went off the air, I checked it out after all these years. But uh, it's a great soap, and it is what everyone says it is um, and more. But, uh, but yeah, it is sorely missed, and I'm so glad he was able to be with us today. So. Yeah, not a lot of people are like me where I've watched soaps um, on ABC and NBC and CBS during commercials. So let's say I was watching um, All My Children and then Young and the Restless would be on at the same time. So when All Mm -hmm. My Children went on to a commercial, I'd watch Young and the Restless. When that went on commercial, (laughs) I went on to All My Children. And then when One Life to Live came on, I would go back and forth between that and Days of Our Lives because they were on at the same time. So this is how I got to be watching so many soaps. Well, but I and, didn't and figure honestly, out how to do that when Guiding Light was still on well, or you, as the world you know, honestly, turned. I can't even begin to imagine what a terror you would have been if we would have had DVR and if we would have had some of the modern technology of, of today back then where we could have – you know, I think everybody could have been a fan of all soaps because you could have DVR'd, you know, those that you didn't watch regularly and tune into your regular soaps. I remember there were many days that I would take, uh, you know, VHS, record the CBS soaps. I'd come in from work, and that's what I would do. I'd sit, sit down in the evenings and catch up on my soaps for the day because, you know, back then there was no getting online, going to, you know, CBS and, and looking at the respective episodes you missed for the day. It just wasn't unheard of. It was, you know, so you, if you didn't or watch Or SoapNet, you know, yeah. we didn't have SoapNet, SoapNet then That's either. Right. So it, um, you know, it's, I really hate that the soap, you know, have, have wasted away the way they have and they just, you know, and now we're down to the ones that we do have left. Thank God we still have some to watch. Mm-hmm. So fans yeah. can. 
at least view. And and the good thing for the remaining soaps that are still on the air, it has gained some fans that love soaps, you know, of some of these other soaps that are no longer on air, um, you know, and now finally um, people who never watched before are getting to see what some of these other soaps are all about. So and they've got exactly. great storylines, you know. So it's, um yeah, The Guiding Light was just, it was icon. It was iconic and the characters were iconic and uh, believe me, if there was any way I could figure out to get them into a web series, I'd do it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I would do it. I mean, you know, yes, the whole Procter & Gamble thing and, you know, them owning the characters. Um, and, and he had a really good point, and that is if you were to put him and Kim Zimmer on a web series soap together and not cast as Josh and Reba, it would be very hard for viewers to see them as anything but Josh and Reba. Even if they were playing completely different story um, characters, similar mm-hmm. storyline it would be real hard for them not to still call them Josh and Reba. So, well, that's, um, that's the same thing like when you watch a soap and it, you watch several soaps, I should say, and one of your characters leaves, let's say, ABC and goes to CBS, mm-hmm. like recently with um, Angie from All My Children, and she went on to play on, on Young and the Restless as Harmony. And uh-huh. it was so hard to look at her and hear that name being called. Because that's not her, that's Angie. And then, of course, Jessie, who was her soulmate and her, who she was married to on All My Children for a zillion years, here they're playing on the same soap on Young and the Restless, but they're not together. You know, they're with yeah. different people and have different uh-huh. names. And it's just, it's almost mind-boggling because when you want to talk about it, like if you're on Twitter, you want to right away you know, type out Angie or you want to type Jesse or something, that's not their name. <laughs> you know, yeah. you have to think well, twice before you write it out. Sometimes I really wonder, you know, I, I wonder just how much the the the, um, the soap companies, you know, it, how much the networks is what I'm trying to say, really pay attention to what the, the viewers want because, Honest to goodness, I, I'm a diehard believer that if the fans were allowed to write the soaps and and as, as dedicated as the fans are, none of those soaps would have left there. And I know a lot of it had to do with the production and the economy weighing in on that. But I don't know. The fan base is just so strong that, um, you know, it, it it would have had just a tremendous impact over and above just the viewership. And um, so, but yeah. Guiding Light is sorely missed, and I don't know what I'll do if Young and the Restless ever goes off air. And, you know, who's to say they won't? I hope it doesn't. But, um, oh. you know, as I was saying earlier, there was a time when we had all three networks were all afternoon from 1230 to 4. You know, all three networks were slam full of folks. You just pick a network and become, you know, tune into which one was your favorite. And, um, and you know, you never would have thought there would come a day when the networks would lose specific soaps and uh and it was really a sad day for daytime drama all around and it's never been the same since exactly exactly and we just got to keep watching whether we like a storyline or not mm-hmm. and keep the the rest of the four soaps that are on for as long as we can yes very very true very true because oh. I know some people stop watching because of a storyline or because of yeah. a character or a couple. And, you know, things always change. That's what it's about. If you stay in the same storyline, who's going to watch that? So That's just true. keep watching. It'll come and, back. And, well. you know, if you've watched soaps for any period of time, then you know that no storyline is going to, you know, it may go on for a little while, but, you know, at some point it's all going to come to an end because it has to end. It has to change. There has to right. be new stuff introduced. So, you know, fans will just hang in there. Even if they don't like the storyline or they don't like what their favorite character is doing in that moment, just know that there's always that opportunity that things are going to change, you know. And there's that right. fast-forward button. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. So, you know, in this day and age, there's a lot of things you can do. You can be real creative when you're watching the soaps. Exactly. <laughs> and, uh, and unfortunately, I, I said that in jest, but if you think about it, that is one of the reasons why the soaps have suffered because of the age of being able to fast-forward through the commercials, which the commercials are what oh, yeah. carried the soaps. Mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. that was their bread and butter, you know, and uh, people not viewing the commercials, that is really, um, that really hurt them. And so, you know, um, it's just the way of the, way of the world, you know, that's, and that's it's an it. unfortunate thing, but it is what we deal with. So, 
Oh, yeah. 20 days. <laughs> I know. Well, and to another subject, let's let our listeners know that tomorrow,